Welcome to my lab. I'm Drew Collip. In today's lab, we're going to look at the Bradford assay. This is an assay we can use to quantify proteins. The chemical Kamasi Brilliant Blue, which is normally a brown-green color, will turn a blue color when it binds to proteins. The more proteins, the more intense blue color. You can see in the image here, we have a blank having no protein, as well as various concentrations of our BSA protein. As we increase the concentration of protein, you can see our solution turns from that brown-green color gradually into more of a blue color. We can then use a spectrophotometer to analyze the absorbance at different wavelengths to determine what the concentration of protein is in our solution. We do this using a standard curve. You can see I have a number of known concentrations. I will analyze each of these in the spectrophotometer to determine what the absorbance was. I can then graph the absorbance compared to the concentration, and this will be my standard curve. Again, the standards are my known concentrations. After this, any unknown sample that has a concentration within the range of my standards, I can compare the absorbance of this unknown to my standard curve. With this technique, I can quickly and accurately determine the concentration of my unknown sample. This is a common technique used in the industry. There are other standard curves involving proteins you can use. In an earlier video, I showed the Bayeret assay. This again is used to quantify proteins. The advantage of the Bradford assay is that it is much more sensitive, going down to one microgram as opposed to one milligram with the Bayeret assay. In addition, the Bradford assay is relatively easy to perform, it has a quick turnaround time, and there are few contaminants that can skew your data. One drawback is that the reagents used in the Bradford assay can stain your test tubes. As a result, you may not be able to use those test tubes in future experiments. Let's start by showing you how the Bradford reagents react with protein. You can see it's a brownish green liquid. When we add the protein, it turns a blue color. In my protocol, I used 0.2 mils of each solution, 1.8 mils of Bradford reagent, and then I let them incubate at room temperature for five minutes. For my standards, I used various concentrations from 200 all the way down to 12.5 micrograms per mil. I had two unknowns. This is unknown C. We can do a comparison to try and visually see where it is in terms of our standard. Looks like it's somewhere between 50 and 25. I have unknown D. You can see it appears to have a higher protein concentration. Visually inspect it. Where does it lie? It looks like somewhere between 200 and 100 micrograms per mil. But let's use a spectrophotometer to be sure. I used a Genesis 30 spectrophotometer in scan mode. Here I want to create an absorption spectrum to determine the A max. I'm going to set my lower wavelength to 325 nanometers, and my upper one is going to be at 1100. I first put in my blank. and I press the blank button, this yellow one. This will now go through all those wavelengths between 325 and 1100 and remove the baseline, setting all of those values to zero. This feature it's quite useful with the Genesis 30, as normally this would have to be done by hand, going manually, wavelength by wavelength. It does take some time for the machine to go through it all, but it's done automatically for you. Once the blank is done, we will then insert our highest concentration solution, and we will determine what the absorption spectrum is for our solution. now telling us to insert our sample and press the green play button to record. 
So we remove the blank and insert our highest concentration, 200 micrograms per mil protein. Close the door and press the green play button. Now you can watch this in real time. It tells you the wavelength it's analyzing and the absorbance at that particular wavelength. In addition, it graphs it for you. The purpose of this is to determine our A max. What is our wavelength of maximal absorbance? Still rising, still rising. Looks like it's starting to plateau off and now it's decreasing. So our wavelength is somewhere around 600 nanometers. In the end, we'll double check it. There we have our absorption spectrum. And now we want to pick out what our A max is. We can use the cursor button to scroll over. So we're at uh, still going up the absorbance. Still going up. Oh, there we go. A max is 589 nanometers based on this absorption spectrum. We will use the live display setting on the Genesis 30 to analyze all of our samples. Here we put in our A max. We're going to use 589 nanometers. I believe the literature states it should be 595, so we're pretty close. We need to blank the sample, so we're going to take our blank, insert it first, close the door, and press the yellow blank button. This will remove the baseline away from the 589 nanometers. We get 100% transmittance. We will now use the live display to analyze all of our samples. 12.5 micrograms per mil, we close the door, wait for it to stabilize and read off our percent transmittance. Here we get 82.7% transmittance. Record that in your laboratory notebook. Next up is 25 micrograms per mil protein. Close the door, wait for it to stabilize, 66.8%. Now, 50 micrograms per mil. Wait for it to stabilize. 45.0. 100 micrograms per mil. Wait for it to stabilize. 23.0. 23 And lastly, our highest concentration, 200 micrograms per mil. Wait for it to stabilize. Nine point one four. Now, as our highest concentration solution of our standard is 200 micrograms per mil, we can only determine unknowns below that value. Unknown C goes in first. Wait for it to stabilize. 43.7% transmittance. Now our second unknown, unknown D. Wait for it to stabilize. 13.5% transmittance. You will then use the formula absorbance equals 2 minus the log of percent transmittance to convert all of your percent transmittances into absorbances. You will create a standard curve by graphing the absorbance on the vertical axis and concentration on the horizontal axis. You will plot all of your known standards. You will connect a line of best fit, which hopefully is a straight line. Sometimes, when you get a higher concentration, the standard curve can plateau out. You will then compare the absorbances that you determined for your unknowns 
you will draw a horizontal line across from that absorbance until it hits the line of best fit. Where it hits the line of best fit, you will then draw a vertical line down and see where it hits the horizontal axis, the concentration. You will read this off, and this will be the concentration of your unknown sample. Alternatively, you can get a formula from your line of best fit, and you can plug in your value for absorbance, and it will calculate the value of your concentration. Again, this is a powerful technique that you're going to use quite often in our laboratories here on campus, as well as many laboratories in the industry. So give this a try, see if you can determine what those unknown solutions are. Until next time.